watching the news on New Vision TV. I am Rothi Naseje. When the military commission led by Paolo Mwanga and Yor Museveni overthrew President Godfrey Binaisa, preparations for multi-party elections kicked off immediately. In the second part of our series on the election that brought war instead of peace, New Vision TV brings you the parties that contested the polls that ended in bloodshed. When he took office as president in mid-June 1979, lawyer Godfrey Vinaisa did not waste time to start consolidating his position. He streamlined the ruling Uganda National Liberation Front into a robust vehicle to propel himself to electoral victory, determined to lock out ex-president Milton Obote, who was still in Tanzania. When the military commission overthrew Inaisa in May 1980, its chairman and the head of state, Paolo Mwanga, hastened to arrange the return of Obote, who was president and founder of the UPC party. Obote arrived the same month and started campaigning. Dr. Paolo Mwanga, who was interim leader of the Democratic Party since the earlier killing of its charismatic leader, Benedicto Chwanka, by the Amin regime, also supported the end of the UNLF and started campaigning. The DP tried to Yoram Museveni, a southerner with military credentials, in a country where the army was still a preserve of the northern region. But Museveni shunned the old parties, which he saw as sectarian, and formed his The Uganda Patriotic Movement, which he led with Bidan Sali as Secretary General and his de facto number two. Former Uganda Katikilo, Joashi Mayanja Nkanji, also formed the Conservative Party, seen as a new name for Kabakaika, the defacant short lived monarchist Kabakaika Party of the early 60s. When the four parties to contest the election identified, a realignment of forces started taking place. The UPC of Milton Obote and head of state Paolo Mwanga suffered most defections, despite it enjoying advantages of de facto incumbency. Big names that deserted Obote included his cousin Adok Nekion, who joined the DP. Many leaders who had been in UPC in the 60s did not want to be associated with its record that included abolition of kingdoms, burning of political parties, and giving rise to the destructive Idi Amin and joined other parties. The DP was a major beneficiary and it had vested many new members. Most conservative Baganda who had been with Kavaka Eka in the 60s went to DP Disillusioned UPC also went to DP. The populous religion of Buganda and Basoga were poised to vote in mass for DP. A tricky situation emerged for the DP when former President Yusuf Le started making plans to return home and contest in the elections. Elule candidature was guaranteed to arouse the ethereal of two months' presidency, which was seen by many as paradise coming a minis eight role. But if Le took the DP nomination from Semo Gerere, he would likely alienate many supporters outside Buganda, which was seen as conservative, unlike Semo Gerere with broader appeal. DP's dilemma was solved by UPC's head of state, Paolo Mwanga, who simply blocked Le from returning to Uganda, accusing him of disrespecting Tanzania's president, Julius Nyerere. Museveni's UPM was an idealistic party and it attracted many educated youth from the city and institutions of higher learning. Its main organizer was Bidandi Sali, a popular city politician, one time manager of the national soccer site, The Cranes, and publisher of the influential weekly topic newspaper. Older people who did not want to associate with the old parties also joined UPM. These included Dr. Samson Kiseka, lawyer Sam Unjuba, Kirunda Kivejinja, and Chintu Musoke. The Conservative Party was created by former Katikiro Mayanja Nkanji. It was by far the smallest as it was an effect of regional party, despite having a secretary general from outside Buganda at the time. The party all the same made a statement of people exercising their right of association and identifying with their origins. 
Although there were four parties in the 1980 elections, the real contest was between Samogere's DP and Obote's UPC, which enjoyed the support of President Paulo Mwanga and Tanzania's Julius Nyerere. Moving on, now Ugandans seeking to renew or acquire new passports are now automatically required to upgrade to the new East African electronic passport, which is the E passport. The new E passport costs 250,000 shillings and contains a small contactless integrated circuit, which is a computer chip embedded in the document's biodata page. The current type, which is machine readable, which are machine readable passports, cost 150. 50,000 shillings, but they are gradually being phased out in favor of the e-passports, which will be launched on July, January 15th. Now, an individual who paid the fee for an ordinary passport is now required to pay an extra 100,000 shillings in order to acquire the East African e-passport. Unless one has an emergency that requires them to travel out of the country, they are unlikely to acquire or renew the old machine-readable passports at the moment. Now, on Thursday, officials at the Directorate of Citizenship and Immigration Control were advising individuals who applied for regular passports to make top-up payments for the new passport. The government is moving to phase out the current type of passports at the end of January 2021, in line with the deadline of all East African community countries to shift to e-passports. Now, the U.S. and other countries in Europe, America, Asia, and Latin America have adopted e-passports. Kenya and Burundi among the countries in East Africa that have started using e-passports. You're still watching the news on New Vision TV and I'll let us take a look at what is making headlines in the sports world. Now Uganda Christian University yesterday flagged off an 87-man strong squad to the 11th edition of East African University Games, targeting to end Ndeje's dominancy in the region. The games will take place from Monday to Sunday next week. At the University of Dodoma, Tanzania, and nine universities from Uganda will be competing in the event. This is the news on New Vision TV and in our Daily Pal of Africa series, we look at the CP Falls. Now you cannot go to the eastern part of Uganda and miss seeing the three spectacular waterfalls known as CP. Now CP Falls straddle three districts which are Carpichur, which are Kaptura, Sironko, and Mbale. Vistas to the waterfalls live with unforgettable memories of the scenery and the several activities they participate in, such as rock climbing and hiking. Let's take a look. Sibi Falls is a chain of three waterfalls. These are vividly seen when you are in the eastern Uganda, particularly in the districts of Kapchura, northeast of Sironko and Mbale. The Sibi Falls area is the starting point for many hikes up to mountain Elgon. The most popular route starts at Budadiri and follows the Sasso Trail to the summit and then descends down the CP Trail back into the CP Falls. Hikes around the falls offer stunning views of the slopes of mountain Elgon. It is advised that those organizing trips here can do it through the Uganda Wildlife Authority and local private operators. This Now, for Mopal of Africa Stories, this is our website, which is www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures, so grab your copy every Sunday for Pal of Africa Stories. <laughs> Now, 
And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch my news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is www.newvision.co.ug forward slash video. You can also catch us on our social media platforms. Facebook is The New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Wire. Instagram is at New Vision Wire. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Rothy the Voice. See you next week.